Hey you guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Male Accountability. So today's episode is going to be tackling the monster of colorism. <clears throat> so first let's start off with the definition. The definition of colorism is the differential differential treatment based on skin color, especially favoritism towards those with a lighter skin tone and mistreatment or exclusion of those with a darker skin tone, typically among those of the same racial group or ethnicity. Simplified, since we're speaking within the black community, simplified is pretty much perpetual racism in which the aspect of being closer to European beauty standards within the black community provides privileges and access both from whites and blacks. All right, so first off, some popular BS rebuttals to refute, so that way I can already shut you down before you write your little comment. Um, first off, this whole we need to focus on the bigger picture bullshit. If you cannot walk and chew gum at the same time, that's fine. But you're not going to pester and jump on people who can. Um, I can hold an hour-long conversation about white supremacy colorism, abuse against black women, and um, abuse against black men within the police um, or within the um, judicial system, all in one hour. If you can't do that, that's fine, but you're not going to jump on other people who do. And like I said, you cannot sit here and jump on white people when you don't want to work on your own in-house issues and tell them to be better when you don't want to be better. Next point. Um, to refute to white people we awesome niggas now while this is true let me direct you to um the views video megan markle i just rewatched chrissy's video on this megan markle and um they would or megan markle was the topic of discussion and eve with her brown skin ass and cheryl underwood with her black ass sat there and really tried to equate Meghan Markle's biracialness to their blackness. And Sharon Osbourne, with her white ass, sat there and said, but she's not black. <laughs> so right then and there, white people make the distinction between mixed, light skin, and dark skin. If that wasn't the case, then why did Chris Rock make a joke about Jesse Smollett? Why is Wale on The Breakfast Club saying that his dark skin held him back? Now, those topics are debatable, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. And I don't have no problem with Eve or Cheryl Underwood. I actually met Cheryl Underwood two um, years ago when I was doing a catering event. Um, very sweet lady. She smells really good. And she had the afro out. Oh, that was y'all. That 4C. Y'all be sleep. Next point, though. Point three. Vocalizing colorism plights are not indicative of weakness, whether it be a man or a woman. And if that's how you feel, shut the fuck up about racism then. Because it's all in your head, right? Because you should just get some tough, thick skin, you know, when the cop is slamming your black ass on the ground, right? You see how stupid that sounds? Next, <laughs> talking about colorism is perpetuating it. Again, black people, if that is the case, then shut the fuck up about racism and white supremacy because you're perpetuating it when you talk about it, right? Again, words have meaning. It, I, I respect people a lot more if they just say, you know what, we don't really give a fuck about colorism. We don't care about this. We got, like, I can respect the people who, not the bigger picture people, but the people who say we have bigger issues to worry about. I respect that so much more than people who try to sit here and make illogical points on why we shouldn't focus on certain in-house issues and they want to pick and choose. Next, colorism is not only a black problem, nor is it just a black American problem. Colorism exists within every community, even white people, as far as how they perceive us. Next point, all shades are the same. Black is black. Boy, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. I don't even have time for that one. <laughs> Seven, Oh, here we go. Reverse colorism <laughs> is a real thing. No, it, it, it isn't. The same way we tell white people reverse racism literally means no racism. <laughs> Words have meaning, people. Um, number eight, 
black mothers are not the only perpetuators of colorism. And I'm sick of black men doing that shit. I'm so sick of that shit. I have heard so much anti-black shit from both the male and female sides of my family. And let me tell you something. I don't care about all the ho-tapping and two-stepping. Only a punk-ass bitch nigga would sit there and blame his women for all the problems in the community. A punk-ass bitch nigga. That's who the fuck does shit like that. Own up to the part that we played. Black women did not fuck up this community by themselves. Now, now that we got that out the way... <laughs> Now, let's go on ahead and um, I'm going to, this is the mixture of personal situations, but also research. So, research, this is um, back from in the 90s. I mean, a lot of this can still apply to current day. So, for dark-skinned people, and I will be linking down um, the articles. For dark-skinned people, colorism can leave them underprivileged in education, lacking job employment, unstable housing, and dark-skinned black women in particular often finding trouble in marriage. Light-skinned people often find themselves having to prove themselves to be black. For the most part, physiologically, or psychologically, <laughs> African Americans who physically appear close to the average medium brown skin tone, i.e. a prototypical shade, seem to be protected in their racial identity and were the least stigmatized by African Americans. In contrast, those with skin tones on the extreme ends of the spectrum, i.e. very dark and very light, experience a lowered sense of mastery or felt less attached to other African Americans. Overall, results of those studies are were variable, although light skin tone Although light skin tone may have been idealized, medium skin persons may have been more protected in their identity and attachments to African Americans. Thus, skin tone bias can be complex, simultaneously serving as advantageous or disadvantageous, depending on the social context. It is important to clarify that the disadvantages of dark skin still far outweigh the disadvantages of light overall. Now, I want to touch on Stephen Brown's video his video was a response to the YouTuber Chrissy's video, which was um, basically this um, woman going off about dark-skinned women mistreating light-skinned women. Now, as far as I'm concerned, when I looked at her, I saw a brown-skinned woman. And you know that article did mention brown skin kind of being the safe space within our community. Um, so maybe that's where she got her complex from, because as far as I'm concerned, I mean, you're not dark skin, but if we, you know, do a paper bag test and stand you up against it, ma'am, you're not getting in the club. So, <laughs> sorry to say it so harshly, but I, um, nonetheless, um, he had mentioned um, that colorism, it causes a lack of safe space within the black community. And I definitely can agree with that. I, I feel like it's very, it's very true, but it's sad. Um, my approach was kind of similar to his. I, I was always under the impression we're all black until my teen years. And what changed that was certain family members and friends would make little remarks here and there, et cetera, et cetera. And then I, once I had turned, um, like, you know, 18 and got, you know what I'm saying? That young adult stage, I really started noticing that, um, there was just certain tensions with dark skinned men that I've crossed paths with in life. Um, even my own father, you know what I'm saying? Me and my basically second family, um, we would have these conversations from time to time. And one of the disconnects we felt that my father and I had was the fact that I don't look like him, you know, and I feel like um, it's an untold or it's a taboo conversation that a lot of parents don't like to have. Um, even though we're so loud to say, oh, yeah, the baby going to look like me. But when the baby comes out and it don't look like you. Or either one of y'all, you know, nobody really wants to just come out and say it. You know what I'm saying? You'll even have family members lie and say, oh, they, they got your eyes, your smile. I'd be like, where? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I feel like that was one disconnect that we had. Like, I look like my mom, literally, from the skin tone to I, I can't even see any of him in my facial features. Maybe, like, the eyes and the ears. But other than, I don't even know about that. But nonetheless, that dynamic between, you know, dark skinned men and light skinned men is definitely something we are going to delve into with this series. And it's not uncommon, especially for a if you're a colorist, dark, dark skinned man, you're color struck. 
You know what I'm saying? You don't find your own features beautiful, which is why you talk shit about the women who look like you. You elevate and um, validate everything light and bright, so i.e. light-skinned women. And when it comes to the brothers of the women that you're fucking or, you know, lusting after, there's this envy or hate there because you don't view your own features as beautiful. But um, we, we will get into that in future episodes. So now I want to break down how black and mixed people in the past have perpetuated colorism. So first up, we have Alexandra Shipp, who is a mixed woman, and she decided that she was going to be Storm, who is a dark-skinned woman. And yes, I understand some mixed people can be dark-skinned. Alexandra Shipp is not one of those mixed people. <laughs> um... This obviously contributes to the erasure of the dark skins and dark skinned woman's image. Next up, Zoe Zaldana. She's the same type of offender um, as as Nina Simone. That also contributes to the erasure of dark skin, unambiguous black women. Next up, we have Laura Govan versus New York, i.e. Tiffany or um, a.k.a. Tiffany Pollard. Um, she made the comment that she wished there were more light-skinned castmates on the show. And as Tiffany Pollard stated, if you are quote-unquote black, then walk in it, stand in it, live in it, breathe in it, in all shades. And that's why I have a problem with this whole black is black and all shades of black. I have a problem with that because it's just as toxic as all lives matter. And since this is black male accountability, I gotta hold us to task. Because there were black men on that couch. Yes, there was a gay man. I know y'all like to sit there and say, oh, well, the, the gay, the, y'all like to sit there and use anybody as a scapegoat. But he was not the only man up there. There was a gay man up there. Benzino was up there. Some other man was up there. Um, there of course, the um, host of the show was a black man. Um, you had Claudia Jordan, Laura Govan, and Tiffany. I think that's all that was there. I think it's called The Next, uh, Next 15, something like that. I don't know. Um, I just remember watching the clip and being like, yes, Tiffany, get her ass. But yeah, let me really back in. Those men sat there and not only were they, well, no, they weren't even quiet as a church mouse. They defended Laura. Oh, it's just a joke. And I know her. And now that I know you, I'm not ignored. And I love Tiffany's response. He's licking ass right now. (laughs) Uh, you gotta love Tiffany. She crazy, but she'll get there with you. At any rate. Um, Claudia Jordan's biracial ass was the only one who halfway had her back. You know what I'm saying? I think they had some issues. You can kind of tell if you watch reality TV for any length of time. You can kind of tell when somebody's like, you know, kind of coming to bat for somebody. And um, she kind of had Tiffany's back. Um, With that being said, the next situation, Gilbert Arenas with Lupita. And basically, I see this as an ugly boy complex. That's really it. Lupita, uh, Gilbert didn't like what he sees in the mirror So why the fuck should Lupita like what she sees Especially being that she's more darker than him And I love Lupita's response Which was absolute dust Pay him dust That's what you pay Dusty She paid him dust And um, I see that she came out with a colorism book for children So you know what I'm saying She's moving in silence You know she didn't respond to him And I like that she didn't respond to him I don't even think she responded to his quote unquote fake ass Or his fucking fake ass apology So um, I'm glad You know what let me go look that up real quick (laughs) Y'all that nigga tried to say That he made those comments to appease White America slash Hollywood (laughs) Get your coon ass out of here Next up, we have Kodak Black. I would loop him in with the same as Gilbert Arenas. He doesn't find his own features attractive, which, I mean, welcome to worth like half of the world. But nonetheless, let me relax. Um, Kodak Black versus Lupita. He posted up a picture of Zendaya and Lupita and said, me and Bay," which is very funny that he thinks he could pull a Zendaya. But nonetheless, um, then Kodak Black versus Dark Skin Black Women. He, you know, spoke to this sports anchor lady or something um, like that. She was out in the field and or not on the field, but on the court. And he was talking to her and um, he said he don't want a black girl like him. Then he said again, he don't really date black girls, but he'll smash Kiki Palmer fetishizing the safe brown. You know what I'm saying? That we spoke about earlier in the article. Or in the the information from the article. Next up, we have Chris Brown, black bitches with the good hair. 
That one pretty much writes itself. We must never forget that Tokyo walked him like a dog promptly after. <laughs> and then he was also accused of not letting dark-skinned women in his section, in his clubs or whatever, uh, in the club, something like that. Um, and then final, uh, the final example that we have is Denzel Washington, who brushed colorism aside with a special snowflake deflection in one of his interviews and uh, if y'all need a reason on why um clinging to actresses like viola davis and octavia spencer when dark-skinned women are saying they want to see more of themselves in the media if y'all don't understand why that's problematic i'm gonna direct you to the youtuber chrissy's videos y'all go check that out she can explain it for you thoroughly um, and that's not to say that there's anything wrong with Viola Davis or Octavia Spencer because black women like that do exist, but they need to see themselves in varieties, not just old, overweight, old and overweight that, that you know what I'm saying? Um, so with that being said, now let's go into the aftermath of colorism. First up, we have the one drop rule and the black attachment that it has caused within the black american community specifically since that's what we're speaking on um yeah you have black people trying to claim paris jackson michael jackson bleached his body not his sperm <laughs> oh my god you know what i'm saying you can also apply that to the whole um megan marco situation earlier you know what i'm saying and i i understand there's a deeper need there for black women to have a win and also in that instance they were kind of rubbing it in black men's face you know what i'm saying because she got with you know a white man and you know they're always there's the interracial war that's going on in between the community so i can understand that one a little bit more but the certain people that y'all try to claim i i just don't even understand it i can't fathom it but then y'all want to clown and joke on white people when they say oh well i'm seven percent black and their fucking dna test at any rate, um, next up, the paper bag test. And um, I lightly want to touch on light-skinned people abusing the system back then versus who currently does it now. Um, I think that a part of black male accountability is, you know what I'm saying, owning up to the fact that we, the, the parts that we had and holding people accountable and light-skinned people, you know what I'm saying, back in the days, obviously we can't be held for what they do, wait, the, what they did to black people back then black or darker skin people to be um physically correct um but you know what i'm saying the comb test the paper bag test which the comb test was a new one that i found out about it banned blacks with coarse nappy african hair if combs could not glide through it so you weren't allowed into certain light skin upper echelon places unless you were the dark skin with you know the looser hair texture um and then there's the Blue Vein Society, which blamed, which banned blacks whose skin tones were too dark to see the blue veins on their arms. Um, so I feel like light-skinned people back then, you know what I'm saying? Although they're painted a certain way, like, you know, just for instance, the whole Madam C.J. Walker movie. It's not that out there for them to have painted the light-skinned woman as being colorist. Light-skinned people back then were colorists. They, they still are today. <laughs> I mean, you can say that it, things have changed a little bit. You know, I do feel like light-skinned men are a little bit more on average, more likely to empathize with, you know, say, dark-skinned women, you know what I'm saying, when they're having their plights because we have our own personal plights. Um, but nonetheless, everybody played their part in this system. You know what I'm saying? They didn't create it, but they did perpetuate it. And we need to start being honest about these conversations within our community and fixing these in-house issues. Next up, um, self-hatred is definitely an aftermath of colorism. And also cognitive dissonance of the self-hate. You could apply this to the situation earlier that I brought up with Gilbert Arenas, how him downing Lupita in her dark skin and saying she looks better in the dark is actually uh, very indicative of how he views himself when he looks at himself in the mirror. But we don't seem to see that when we say shit like that and all this anti-black rhetoric that we like to, you know, mask as jokes, quote unquote. So now that we've gotten through all of that, the explanations, let's go over the solutions. Um, Number one, call out colorist. Celebrities or not. I don't care if it's your friends, your family, um, your influencers. 
I was literally in the grocery store earlier and I was watching this. Um, she appeared to be light skinned to me. Girl, speaking, um, you know, I mean, there's lighting and all that stuff, but she had a story time about a roommate that she had fought and she referred to the girls dark skinned and ugly. And I was mad because I'm in the store. I didn't watch this video the whole time. I've been laughing with her and all that. And she says that at the end of the video. So I'm like, you just, you lost a subscriber. You was going to get a like. You was, mm, I don't fuck with that color of shit. But at any rate, um, call them out. And I don't care how long ago they tweeted the bullshit is, is in reference to celebrities. If they never came out and apologized, then I don't care how long ago they tweeted it. Shit, Chrisette Michelle apologized and y'all still said she deserved her abortion for doing the whole Trump inauguration. Beside a black man who nobody seems to know the name of or wanted to drag along with her. Um, and then there's the whole Kanye West. Y'all still can't pick a side on him. But nonetheless... Um, growth is possible. However, accountability is necessary for growth to occur. You have to let people know that what they're doing is wrong and understand that people don't have to accept colorist apologies no more than black people have to forgive racist white people's apologies. They don't. Withdrawal of support from bigotry does not mean something is wrong with whomever does not choose to accept said apology. You know what I'm saying? Apologies are really for the person doing it but that doesn't mean that we all have to Ooh, you know doja cat girl come back in it's okay that doesn't mean we have to no we don't have to forgive these people next up have these painful conversations with your children in inner circle just like racism it might not be easy but it is necessary to start the healing process kids in specific also need to be told to love themselves but also that all shades of black are beautiful this is a generational curse, people. It's going to take effort to deconstruct. And it's important that you teach them that they are beautiful themselves, but also that all shades are beautiful. Because if you just say they're beautiful and teach them to love themselves, you leave room for a um, complex of them feeling like they're better than everybody else, regardless of if they're light skin or dark skin. Um, next up, listen to black women, dark skin in particular's plight. Stop gaslighting them and deflecting. If you have an issue, go make your own platform. Don't come on to Chrissy's videos playing Oppression Olympics and starting problems. If you're not interested, tune out. You don't have to bash anyone because of your guilt or to make you feel better. Check your bias. If when I decide to do my video on the strained relationship between light-skinned men and dark-skinned men, if there's a dark-skinned male YouTuber who watches that video and feels that I got some points wrong, he is totally fine to go on his own platform and make a video on it. You know what I'm saying? Do that on your own time, though. Stop coming when people are having their own times to speak. You wouldn't go to a damn rally for cancer and say, oh, well, what about kidney stones? Bitch, we ain't talking about that right now. You, had, you should have been talked about that when you had time. You don't have the microphone now. Shut the fuck up, ho. Next, promote more unbigu unambiguous black and brown women to even out the playing field when we are given the chance to. And finally, understand that the erasure of your women is eventually going to circle back to the erasure of you. But if y'all want to keep on cheering the more light-skinned babies, go ahead. <laughs> I can throw in the S curl and pass is mixed. <laughs> Let me relax. That was too much, Tyson. <laughs> All right. On that note, it's time for me to go. It's 1150. <laughs> All right, I hope y'all enjoyed this. Um, y'all let me know if there's any discussions that y'all want me to tackle in this black male accountability um series. Link uh, or let me know down below. Um, and um, yeah, I'll get back to you, get started on the research for the topics. Um, let me know what y'all think so far of the series and I will catch y'all on the next video. Peace.